My very first Nintendo business video. Let's do this. And I gotta say, I'm starting to see why some of you are excited. So not only are fans thrilled with the Super Mario Brothers movie, but you're calling for a Nintendo Cinematic Universe, an NCU, if you will. And why not? Because as we seem to maybe be jumping from comic book movies to video game movies, why not a Nintendo Cinematic Universe? Is it possible when a movie makes this much money? Anything is possible. So let's take a frank look at the situation for Universal and Nintendo and what games are most likely to make the jump to the silver screen next. I have a plan. I have a 10 year plan and I'm excited to hear what you think they should do. All right, so first question we gotta ask is should all NCU movies be animated? It does have a ring to it, NCU. Should all NCU movies be animated or should some of them be live action? I did some digging with my sources over the past week and it seems that Universal and Nintendo have discussed some live action movies. But that was, I think, prior to the success, the monster success of Super Mario Brothers. So let's see if they stick with that. They're probably having a conversation just like this. It's worth noting that Chris Melodondry, the head of Illumination, and now also DreamWorks Animation after uh, Universal acquired it, part of the stipulation of that deal was that Jeffrey Katzenberg had to leave. Ouch, that man is an animation icon. But still, they kicked him out, and Chris Melodondry took over both animation houses. But Super Mario Brothers, of course, was made over at Illumination. Uh, but Melodondry is working to bring us another Shrek, so that man's firing on all cylinders. Well, two cylinders. <laughs> or maybe a third, because he revealed that Miyamoto himself invited Melodondry to join the Nintendo Board of Directors. No small honor. And that shows not only a growing connection between Nintendo and Universal, in addition to the theme park lands they're opening, but also now with animation specifically. Nobody else at Universal's been asked to join the board, have they? But you know, when you think about it, it makes sense because video games and animation are probably very similar process, uh, processes, so they get along. They, they know what, what the other one goes through. Uh, but also, I think that means that they think that Miyamoto feels that he and Mel uh, Melodondri, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship for them, and quite lucrative. But let's discuss um, <clears throat> the arguments for having an all-animated NCU versus throwing a couple of live-action movies in there. So we'll start with all-animated. With animation, the video games can come to life exactly how fans know and remember them. No famous actor takes over a fan favorite. And considering how big a factor nostalgia and recreating the Super, Mother, Super Mario Brothers experience has been in the success of the movie, that's, I think, a very important factor and something to, that's a very strong argument for going all animated. If all the Nintendo movies are animated also, it will be easier to do a Super Smash Brothers movie, Nintendo's big multiverse fighting game, which is so popular, Warner Brothers copied it. Uh, Nintendo can continue to also to have tight creative control in animation, but once you go live action, you need an experienced director. And an experienced director has a reputation and a style to uphold. Uh, so do again big name actors. Now, I guess you could say some franchises, we'll leave them nameless, have managed to squash out all the creative aspects of some of the directors that they bring on. But I think that has not worked very well. I mean, if you're gonna hire a named director, people expect that named director to deliver what people like about said named director. You could get some newbie and stick them on the live action film, but then you're gonna have a learn curve. It's tough. It's very tough. There's a lot more politics and egos come into play with live action. Illumination clearly was like, tell us what to do, Nintendo, and we shall animate it. Uh, and Nintendo made it clear with the success of the Super Mario Brothers movie that they don't really need name talent in their uh, movie and maybe television adaptations. But I do think that Jack Black as Bowser definitely made a difference. Fans are already championing his peaches for best original song at the Oscars. And who knows? Who knows what this movie could accomplish? Uh, and Chris Pratt, he really rallied faith-based audiences to show up for this movie. And they've proven their box office muscle as of late, and I think they definitely were a factor in the, I mean, I'm not saying they're totally responsible for the success of this film, but I think it would be a mistake not to recognize their contribution. So maybe big name Hollywood talent is helpful and maybe they could be helpful even beyond voice work. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the benefits of throwing some live action movies in there. Some of the more humanoid Nintendo games could really work well in live action, like Metroid, 
which could play like a more colorful alien movie, right? Or Legend of Zelda. Uh, that leads to the next argument for some live action movies, and that's that it would help to change things up, right? If all the Nintendo movies seem the same, maybe audiences will grow tired of them. Maybe they'll seem, cause you might be like, I'll never grow tired of Nintendo movies looking exactly like they're supposed to look. But maybe they'll seem less special if they're coming out all the time and they all seem the same. I mean, you never thought you'd get tired of Marvel, yet here we are. Some of you suggested that maybe uh, Nintendo and Universal could change up the style of animation to better fit the property. That's a suggestion you had in particular for Legend of Zelda. That could work. That could work. Uh, although uh, animation really hasn't been tested in the West with mainstream audiences. The Last Airbender is about to do that, so maybe Nintendo could let them be the canary in the box office and see how that goes. But there's still a little bit of a question mark there. Uh, but I think some live action movies would be good to mix things up. But then what happens with the Super Smash Brothers movie, right? Well, those live action characters could be sucked into a portal where they get animated, or they could just show up in live action. Uh, there are a lot of live action animated hybrid movies these days, and some of them have been quite successful. Some of them have not been very successful and in fact have been ridiculed, but still, it can be done. And if the live action movies are as well received as Super Mario Brothers is, because you know, Nintendo will be overseeing them, maybe it could be really fun. Uh, speaking of audience burnout though, one of the reasons that Super Mario Brothers I think did so well is that Nintendo fans have been underserved in the entertainment space beyond video games, like with movies, television, theme parks, etc. So fans are thirsty. So that's why the Super Mario, uh, theme park lands and the movie have just blown up. But how do you keep audiences thirsty once the tap has been turned on? Well, I think the thing is obviously not to overserve. So let's take Illumination's wildly successful Despicable Me franchise as a potential template. The first movie came out in 2010, and they're like taking over the world at this point, man. They're changing Mel's drive-in at Universal Studios into a Minions Cafe. I have mixed feelings about that. I don't like seeing the classic films being pulled out of these movie-based theme parks to prop up IPs. I love the IPs, but you know, you're creating a lot of film fans who don't know anything actually about film. And I find it frustrating. RIP, great movie ride. So, the first Despicable Me came out in 2010, then the sequel came out three years later, then the first Minions movie, two years after that, and Despicable Me 3, two years after that. Then, Minions 2 was going to come out sooner, but the pandemic hit, so you had a five-year break. Uh, but De uh, Despicable Me 4 is set to come out two years, just, just two years again after uh, Minions 2 in 2024. So that seems like the sweet spot, two year breaks between movies. So factor that into your expectations. Uh, by the way, that's another argument to throw some live action movies in there because then Nintendo and Universal could double up. What you could do is either alternate between animated and live action movies every year, so you have a movie a year, or you could release two movies in the same year, one animated and one live action. You might be like, well, why don't I just release multiple animated movies all the time? You could, but again, I think you might be a little bit concerned about, I mean, they would start to perform back to earth levels of a box office performance. If you wanna send it into the stratosphere, I think you have to be a little bit more discerning. Cause I mean, Pixar and Disney animation release a lot of movies, but they don't all perform huge. Well, they, had, they, had, they were going really well for a while there, but Despicable Me, those movies two years apart have consistently delivered close to a billion or sometimes a billion. So that I think is a very, and it's the same uh, studio and animation house, so they know how to do that. So what movies are we gonna release? What's gonna blow up like Super Mario Brothers? How about more Super Mario Brothers? That seems like the obvious answer to me. And when you look at the sales figures for all Nintendo games, nothing else comes close to the sales for Super Mario Brothers. Runner up is Pokemon, that's how you pronounce it, correct, right? Pokemon, which I think many of us, at least outside of the video game space, have thought of as its own thing. Yet, they, Pokemon is featured in Smash Brothers. And by the way, speaking of Pokemon, remember the sensation that Pokemon Go was? I mean, that was huge. And when you think about that, maybe the rest of us should have realized that Super Mario Brothers would be just the same sensation. But Detective Pikachu, Pikachu did not work out. And I think that's maybe because it seemed like more of a Ryan Reynolds movie and it was too much of a specific part of Pokemon than, uh, than if it had been like a Nintendo movie that focused on the game that's so popular. 
But Universal is unlikely to rush into a Pokemon uh, movie or show, and I think at all, uh, because Netflix is already set up there. They're doing a live action Pokemon series that I hear is still years away, you know, just a few, but years away. But they're already doing VFX tests that I also hear have really impressed the folks at Nintendo. They think it looks better than anything before done for Pokemon in live action. So it sounds promising, but it's not gonna be part of the NCU. So back, back to, unless, I mean, unless Nintendo tries after this success, will they try to wrangle out of their Netflix contract? I mean, the show hasn't been released. It's still years away, uh, but that, that would be very tricky. I mean, Universal would have to, I mean, buy the contract maybe. Let's see what they decide to do. All right, so back to Super Mario Brothers. Uh, I hear Nintendo and Universal do want to go all the way with this brand. A sequel, no brainer, as I said, and I'd suspect that will be the next step that you see. They even set it up at the end of the recent film with an end credit scene featuring a Yoshi tease. Uh, it could have been a better tease, but it was there. It was there. And did you see Yoshi in the background with the dinosaurs running by? One of them stopped and looked. All right, but I hear Nintendo and Universal want more. They want a Luigi's Mansion movie, a solo Donkey Kong movie, and a solo Princess Peach movie. Would all those characters work on their own adventures? Or should they have character arcs within Super Mario Brothers movies? I would say that's what you should do. But I'm curious, as fans who liked this movie, which doesn't follow typical Hollywood rules for storytelling, what would you like to see them do with the Super Mario Brothers movies? Just make, keep making sequels? Or do you want to see them splinter off into these solo films? Uh, then, of course, there's Legend of Zelda. But look at those sales compared to Super Mario Brothers. That would make me very nervous from an executive perspective, you know, the studio perspective. I'd be like, that is a smaller fan base. Uh, and maybe that's a reason that a live action Legend of Zelda is a good idea, right? Maybe you need the big Hollywood names to do some heavy lifting there. And certainly for Metroid and Star Fox, look at those sales. Oh my goodness, they're so tiny. Kirby's bigger, Kirby! But a whole Kirby movie? You know what I would do with Kirby? I would wait to debut Kirby for Super Smash Brothers and make that a selling point for the film. All the characters you already know and love, plus Kirby's finally joining the party. All right, so on that note, here's what I would do. And I look forward to hearing your own suggestions down below. Super Mario Brothers 2 would be next. Yoshi's Cookies. <laughs> I'm just calling it that because I thought about it and Yoshi is like when I was very little It's the only game from Nintendo. I ever really played like more than once I like tried Super Mario a few times wasn't for me, but I liked Yoshi's cookies. I gotta tell you uh, It's a spin-off game. It's not really anything like what Nintendo is about But if you want to get the nostalgia feels for me call it Super Mario Brothers 2 Yoshi's cookies uh, then I would do after that Legend of Zelda, and I would either do live action or animated, but with a different style than Super Mario Brothers. Let's see if we can bring animation into the West finally. I think you can see how some of the anime is doing at the box office. I think we're there. I think we're there. And Nintendo has the, has the, uh, the muscle to, make, to push it through, to make it happen. Then for Metroid, I'd go live action. And I'm saying this largely because it seems like Hero's Duty, Hero's Duty, from Wreck-It Ralph. That's what I think, and get Charlie's Theron in here. I'd be like, what's it gonna take, Charlie's? What kind of check is it gonna take to get you into Metroid? Do they ever take their helmets off? I mean, they're gonna have to, we can't have, I mean, I don't know, it works for the Mandalorian, although I know a number of you are getting tired of it. They're even getting tired of it in the show. All right, so after all that, then I would do a Super Smash Brothers movie, and I would be live action animation hybrid, and I would debut Kirby, and also Animal Crossing. I'm tempted to throw Star Fox in there because I know so many of you are fans of Star Fox, but that seems like a little too much. Uh, I think I'd save Star Fox for later. I would have all my, you know, I'd have Super Mario Brothers, Legend of Zelda, and Metroid come together, and then I'd throw in Kirby and Animal Crossing for some major fighting action. And that would take eight to 10 years with the two years between movies approximately. So that's, that's long. So, I mean, that's kind of what you should set yourself up for. And I hope, I hope they're getting started. We're not even factoring in, the amount, factoring in the amount of time it takes to get this kind of machine up and running. So it could be slow in the beginning. It could be even longer. It could be maybe 10 to 15 instead. All right, now it's your turn. I mean, I, I think about it, and maybe that's another reason to go. Animation can be slow, but once you get the models up and running, you can. maybe that's one of the reasons they can turn the, the sequels around in two years. I think particularly with computer animation, you can, you know, the models are already in the computer. You can get them up running faster. You don't have to build all that. So maybe that's another reason to stick with all animation, you know, the speed. 
Uh, but I think you want to do it right. And so I'm very curious to how you think it would be to do it right. Uh, what are your hopes and dreams for the NCU, the Nintendo Cinematic Universe? Share them down below. Thanks for going over this with me. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.